Are you there, Coop? <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're on a retro trek with the Caramel Apples, a podcast that dials up thoughtful, heartwarming nostalgia of all things gray and retro in the golden era of pop culture and beyond. I'm Kennedy Rizzo. And I'm Cooper Lee. A take on music, for example, when referring to the great works and talent of such beloved artists of yesteryear, you think of it helping us as in our wild imaginations to go back and come alive and awaken the very essence of fond nostalgia. Join us as we take you to the orchard sweet spot to dive into the world of renowned singer, dancer, Taylor Dane, a timeless example of raw talent back then that told you to tell it to her heart. archivers and thank you so much for taking the time to journey back again with us this week and don't forget to take a moment to subscribe rate and review we so appreciate your continued support this week we have an exciting bit of nostalgia to tickle your ears with so you know here we are um loving this episode topic this week oh um, yeah This Uh is someone who tickled the fancy of many a young boy back in the day. (laughs) She did. (laughs) And, you know, we're not hating because she was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And that being Taylor Dane, as you mentioned. And there's so much to dive into as far as her, how she got started, you know, her love of music. And, and really, that soulful voice that she had is so characteristically hers. Yeah. That, that is interesting that you mentioned that because, like, again, you know, when you're kids, you just either come up, stumble onto something, or you hear something, and you're just kind of like, it, take, it grabs your attention. Yes. Yes. And you're like, huh? What? And then you look around, <laughs> you're like, who is that? Yeah. And she had, um, like, we were, we're talking about her wonderful voice. And the look of her, like her her face, like she had the package, the entire package. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a lot of up and coming singers at this time. Um, she fits very well in that genre. Oh, yeah. Um, but maybe they didn't have everything in the bag, but she did. Like <laughs> she was maybe one of the top five who had it all together. So she did. And like you said, she had pipes yes taylor dank is saying like get out of the way yeah yeah so she got where we really got to know her was in the later 80s Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but i do believe she got started earlier than that um not necessarily songs that maybe we knew but maybe they were some people might know them But as far as we're concerned, um, some of her notable songs that we really took to were like, Tell It To My Heart (laughs) or um, Love Will Lead You Back. That was a very beautiful ballad. Yeah, Prove Your Love. Yes, yes. Yeah, Heart of Stone. I wore that one out. I had a cassette single of that one. Oh, there you go. Okay, cassette single. So it definitely is in our time parameters. (laughs) 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 <laughs> it's funny the other day um there's a an album that my husband wanted to purchase um on amazon he goes ah, they don't have a cd for it he's like everything's mp3 and i was like yeah well, gone are the days of the easy way of listening to music if you're not up on tech you know and cassette yeah. singles are way back there <laughs> And that's kind of notable because, you know, we are in the middle of all this. We are, we were at the cusp back then. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) And now 
now we try to you know navigate and stuff and if you miss out on a couple couple three years <laughs> you know that's probably even a stretch you know like we are in the dark ages you know like we try to <laughs> yeah try to do things like the way we used to and everybody's like laughing at us because they're like like you said <laughs> cd <laughs> gaffal, gaffal, you know oh yeah yeah i mean <laughs> you hang your head in shame but then you're like wait a minute no i'm proud of that history <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, Coop's Hubby does have a very impressive collection of DVDs and CDs. <laughs> he still has them and loves them. He does zero <laughs> shame in that game. Good for him. I'm glad. Don't let don't let them intimidate you there, hubby hubs. <laughs> yeah. So you know this is going to be an exciting discussion about Taylor Dane this week because let's just be honest, Taylor Dane is the very essence of the '80s. And her talented contributions are seen and heard all throughout pop culture. It is very evident. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was kind of like, man, the greats back in our day. That was like people go on about like certain ones today, like <laughs> Beyonce, Taylor Swift, J-Lo. And they are talented, I guess, in their own right. Um, yeah. But not like, <laughs> it's not like it was back in the day. So I just have to make that distinction. It is what it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> But before we jump too far ahead of ourselves this week, we're going to jump back and um, kind of uh, pave the way. We're, we're going to start from her beginnings, you know, from what we know, and, and give a little bit of her early history before we get into the explosion of when we got to know she was on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> so you cool? You doubt that, Coop? I think that is a great idea. It makes sense to me. Okay. So. We know her as Taylor Dane. That's her stage name, though. Um, her actual name is Leslie Wonderman. Okay, yes. That would have never been a guess. <laughs> right. Completely different from Taylor Dane, right? Completely. <laughs> Although Taylor Dane, that name is bad to the bone. <laughs> it is cool, isn't it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> but she was born March 7th, 1962. Um, and she's a singer, songwriter, and actress. Uh, she was actually born in Manhattan, New York City, the NYC. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, that's another reason why she's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she lived briefly in another borough. She lived in the Bronx. Cool. Yeah. So then she went from the Bronx, and then her family moved to Long Island. Long Island. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she was just a little spot. She was two years old. Oh, but then you know she you know started she grew up and she's starting to figure out she was interested in music and the music scene and all so she began singing professionally after graduating from high school um and that was in baldwin nassau county new york okay uh, and she started singing in, in little known rock bands like felony and next so she also began singing solo after finishing college and under the name Leslie, which is a play on her name, of course, because it's spelled differently. Uh huh. Um, she recorded two dance singles, one entitled I'm the One You Want from 1985 and Tell Me Can You Love Me in 1986, just a year later. So, yeah, these were released on the New York indie label scene, uh, Mega Bolt. So, this is what I love about our podcast. I love the fact that, you know, we have the things that we definitely remember. And I love the fact that we go back further, deeper into those people or um, whether it's a TV show, if it's an actual person that you're talking about, you know, and you find out their beginnings. I yes. love that because it's like, there's what you knew. And then it's like their history is what led up to what you discovered. And yeah. It is, it's so exciting to learn that, yeah, her name was not Taylor Dane. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we knew. And she totally looks like a Taylor. So she it, does. Yeah. And like um, we were younger, you know, the big hair and stuff is like, that's what you want to look like. And that was never going to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that was like, oh, okay. That's what I want to look like. Hashtag goals, whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> But, you know, at that time, you know, when there was these little 80s dance and, and pop tunes that filled the air and, you know, it was a dime a dozen at that time. 
you know, oh, kind yeah. of very reminiscent of what's going on now. Like, you know, everybody and their brother, they were like on some little TV show and now they're a pop star. It's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, but at the time, these people were like Madonna, Janet Jackson, um, Whitney Houston, Paul Abdul. We've already talked yeah. about her. So yeah, cool. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. She's another really pretty one. That's right. Check that out. We did her, we did an episode on her, so you got to check that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Tiffany, Debbie Gibson, Kathy Dennis, you know, blah, blah, blah. You start naming them off. And there's so many. And then there was this other little female voice that stood out as her own, even when there were so many. And that was Taylor Dane. Like she, even though there was, it was very populated and not discounting any of these people with talent, but she was able to come onto the scene and still stand out. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And you know, we both remember being taken by her vocal prowess. Yes. I mean, this woman was no, she was no thin voice pop diva wannabe. No, no. <laughs> no, Taylor had this, like, if you want to call it that, like, she had some pipes. Like, she had this gospel-esque pipe uh, where she showed off, like, her talents like Aretha Franklin did. You know, like, she was just yeah. like, oh, you want me to sing? Okay, hold on. Here we go. Like, she's effortless. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. she hit those notes yeah so like we were saying if I can get my tongue untied um, <laughs> she she had the the quality and prowess like her contemporaries like Aretha Franklin did like she could sing yeah and she was still seemed like she was down to earth like she just didn't seem that didn't go to her head she's like yeah if that's asked somebody say hey can you sing? She's like, yeah, let me, and not even just tell you, she'll show you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be awesome to be able to do that? <laughs> that would be an actual cool wish to have. Like if that could come to fruition, that would be awesome. Yeah. To just, you know, even if there was a little stage fright to just know that the minute you opened your mouth, people would be like, what? <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> bring down the house yeah yeah that is so cool it is a it is a wonderful marvelous talent to have and people are being worshipped for way less now <gasps> i don't they don't have the, they don't have this yeah <laughs> uh, we won't mention names but they do not have this nah no nah. so I, I mean something else to reminisce and long for the old days <laughs> oh i know yes <laughs> We always say it, take us back, please. <laughs> That's right. But, you know, when her songs, you know, busted out on video, or on the radio, or, you know, he go somewhere in a skating rink, whatever, you'd be on the dance floor, you know. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it just took you away. It's like that, uh, that energy, that electricity that just got you moving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and any given retro fan at the time could flip on MTV and could discover taylor dane yeah you know and here she was this little tiny powerhouse she was blonde like we already mentioned her history is jewish Mm -hmm. and you know she is from the nyc Mm -hmm. and (laughs) here she'd be miming her songs in her video her hair was as big as she was yeah and you know we will mention cringe worthy crimped hair (laughs) because it was so big at the time i mean that just 80s hair was scary. It's amazing we made it out of that time and still had hair on our heads, right? (laughs) I know. I mean, (laughs) and I will say this real quick because about the 80s hair, she had it. It was huge. Yes. And everybody did. I mean, all her contemporaries. But that is the one thing when they try to emulate like things from the 80s and a lot of television shows or movies, whatever they're trying to do. Yeah. They never, they get the music, they'll try to get the fashion <laughs> or the cars, but they they never, very rarely do they get the hair. I agree. I agree. <laughs> so here it's like they're trying to recreate something and all we did was just live. Mm-hmm. You just yeah. lived and did things. It's like peg in the pants. Which I still do that from time to time, and my husband makes fun of me. You my little sh- uh, uh, uh. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you just do things, and that's what it was. We just 
that was the style at the time and you didn't have to think about it like well in 20 years will they still be wearing their hair like this you just did it right and like you said those are the little things that when you try to recreate it you're not going to get the whole picture if you don't do every little thing oh it will be missing hashtag facts (laughs) hashtag facts and it's so nostalgic yeah so right in the peak of this big hair time it was like probably I mean, she got her start in 85. Um, but, like, we started knowing she was around 87, 88. Uh-huh. So she rose to fame around that time. And that's when her big single came out, Tell It to My Heart. Oh, bravo. Yeah, so she got signed on to Arista Records as Taylor Dane. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> and it was her first song to crack the top ten. And was a dance pop hit, Tell It to My Heart, in late 1987. So, like, it it kind of dominated the music scene. You, know, you heard that song. Oh, yeah. And here it is, 87. One of your favorite years of the 80s, right? Yeah, she was part of that. I, I totally, <laughs> totally tell you. She's part of that. <laughs> but, you know, the song was an instant smash worldwide hit, peaking in the top five of most major markets worldwide and reaching number one in many countries, including West Germany. You know what? I have to say, it seems like Europe is, they always seem to know what's up and coming, what is fresh, what is new, and they seem to jump on pretty quick. Germany, especially, seems like. Uh They seem to be in a lot of people's journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things will reach epic levels over there, and then we'll hear about them here. And it's like, well, Germany's already on it, you know. (laughs) 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 Welcome (laughs) us to the party. Thank you. (laughs) That's right. Welcome to the party. (laughs) Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. If this episode entertained you, please share it and spread the word. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your continued support. And now, back to the show. so taylor dane actually achieved six additional u.s top 10 singles uh and that included i think you mentioned some of these a few moments ago coop um love will lead you back Mm -hmm. with every beat of my heart prove your love that was a good jam too i really liked that one oh yeah and i'll always love you which was a ballad um I don't know. I don't know if you're similar as me, Coop, but I I don't mind ballads. I was never a huge fan of them, but um, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, one of our friends from the girl squad uh, that was her jam. Like, it didn't matter who was singing them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Her, her imagination went wild. She loved ballads. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> That was her jam. I it mean, was. You could see it in her eyes too, right? <laughs> These songs yeah. would come on, and she, even if she was driving, you're like, "Oh, she's going somewhere." Holy God! What are you showing me? Hey, come on! <laughs> yeah, you're like, "Hello, come back to Earth. We're here. We're down here." <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're good times, though. <laughs> Much love to her. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the albums, Tell It to My Heart, which came out in 88, and Can't Fight, Can't Fight Fates, excuse me, in 18, 1989. Yeah. Um, the string of hits from her first two albums, though, the, you know, Tell It to My Heart and Can't Fight Fate, proved to be the peak of her career. And this is true, because like, you couldn't get any bigger than her. 
right during that time sure yeah and that's how it was is like it i mean hand over fist people were bringing their belting hits out they were you know they were everywhere janet jackson her kathy dennis yeah and you couldn't keep up hardly. It's just, it was goodness all around. Good music, good style, fashion, whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Great. You know, and it's surreal that her debut and sophomore albums are, are, are now considered classic dance pop albums of their time. I know we're getting old. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is a sign that you could be walking through any store, any grocery store, and you'll hear certain songs you're going, that artist never meant for that to be playing in a grocery store <laughs> while all these older people are shopping. I mean, talking older than us. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's just different. It's crazy. The, yeah. These are now classic songs. Yeah, it um, brings a caramel tear to our eye. It really does. <laughs> um, but I mean, no one had the powerhouse vocals like Taylor Dane did and still does have today. Like, you know, just a side note, um, she, there's a show that a lot of people watch and it's called Mass Singer. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. And she actually was on that. Um, I believe it was season four and she, um, her, her character was Popcorn. Anyway, you know, watch the whole season and I remember she sang so well. All like, right. That <laughs> voice is so familiar. That's now, huh? Yeah. So I mean, like you said, she she had it then. She still has it now. And that's a note to her. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, that is so cool. Very, very cool. Oh my gosh. Well, so we kind of said that, you know, a minute ago, like, I mean, obviously she's still talented. She still can sing. She'll do it. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's just different. It's not like it was back in the late 80s. So she did go on to release two more albums, as you mentioned, in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And she had only one more top 40 hit. And that was from her 1993 cover of Barry White's 74 hit, 1974, folks. Um, <laughs> Can't get enough of your love. And that's a good song. He did it when he did it. It's a good song when she did it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's just off the album, the 1993 album, Soul Dancing, which reached number two in the ARIA charts in Australia. Ooh. But it only hit 20 here in the United States. Buzzkill. Buzzkill, indeed. Buzzkill. You can tell my wish. <laughs> Now, you mentioned the fact that, you know, she did a Barry White song. Yes. Well, everybody knows that he has that husky voice, right? Like, he, he's got a signature sound as well. <laughs> so, I can't imagine a lot of other people being able to sing his song and give it the same nuances like he did, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, but she can because of the signature sound that she has yeah like she would give it do justice like he does so that's really really cool because you gotta be careful when you try to <laughs> oh. do a remake or whatever uh because we're not real huge on those anyway tell me about it Ev- with everything yeah so with remakes you do have to be extremely careful and I do think this was not a, a hard sell for her by any means. You know, she might have already been a fan of that song anyway. And she probably, probably figured, like, it was uh, probably something that maybe she never, in her wildest dreams, she might have the opportunity to do. Mm. And she probably took on to that, like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. And she she made the song transcend in her way. So, right, very right. nice. Well, you know... We're some we're a couple of her diehard fans from back in the day, and we just really scratch our heads, wondering why, with the talent she has, with the looks that she has, the connections we thought, mm-hmm. why didn't that go any further? I mean, because honestly, she's somebody that has what it takes to keep entertaining the masses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she just decided to do other things. She's a she's a human, you know. She's like, I got things I want to do. It's not always in front of the stage or on the, in front of the camera. <laughs> Yeah, so. 
what has she done? <laughs> so she actually has um, taken time out of her life. She did become a mom. <laughs> okay, okay. So she actually had twins. Gotcha. And um, that was in December 30th of 2001. So, my goodness, what, they're 20-something now. Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah, uh, their name is Astaria and Levi. So she, okay. those are her books. <laughs> yeah, and that's probably a bigger bigger gift and blessing than just old singing for the masses. She, she still can do it, obviously, but right. she'd probably do other things. <laughs> You know, and you think about it, um, you you imagine how someone like her music producer, how he probably felt when he was able to work alongside someone like her. Um, his mm-hmm. name was Rick Wake. Oh, okay. And um, he was also worked with someone like Celine Dion and Gloria Stefan. Oh. Um, so he probably has an ear for that, right? Well, he did a good job if that's the case. <laughs> he really did. He really did. Um, so fun fact, in 2005, Dane was featured in the VH1 series Remaking, which featured her close friends, Leah Remini and Michelle Reed. Hmm. And the series documents Dane's return to music after taking time off to have her family, which was um, actually delivered via surrogate for twins oh Um, okay and she premiered her newest song at the time which was right now and it was as a result of her collaboration with rodney jenkins all right okay yeah and also you know another side point of that fun fact taylor never married okay yeah, so, you know, she's got her bugs all to herself. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I'm a smart lady, okay? I'm savvy. <laughs> well, she did have a few bumps in the road here in recent years, too. Um, like most of us do. You get, <laughs> yeah, you start getting up there in age and health problems start sticking to you like metal shavings to a magnet. Unfortunately. Yeah, but... Our Grammy-nominated singer revealed she was diagnosed with colon cancer just recently. Um, She said that she fought the dark battle with the disease, and she learned that she had the illness in July of 22. So, like, this was pretty fresh. Yeah, okay. And and she, how she found out was just like they're encouraging people to do is to go and try to get a routine colonoscopy and... And they didn't have very good news for her. Oh, wow. Yeah. So now, because she had actually experienced this, she's an advocate, a firm advocate for people to to go get it get it done. You know, because mm-hmm. early detection is is how you can find a problem. And, you know, she's still around. She I think she was able to beat it. Nice. Yeah. She's like, and she, and I quote, she says, life is precious. The doctor never even said the stage of cancer. All I could do was think, okay, five months to go. I know there was nothing. So this is early detection, end quote. Hmm. So again, weeks weeks after her diagnosis, um, she underwent a surgical procedure to actually remove 10 inches of her colon. So, oh boy. Yeah, so... But, I mean, that sounds extensive, but she is now, I guess, for this point, cancer-free. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, but she ended up getting a post-op infection because that's how health issues do. (sighs) They plague you. They come to you. Good night. Poor (laughs) thing. Yeah. (laughs) So, I think she's just been picking up the pieces and recovering, enjoying her family, you know, in the last couple of years because, I mean, you know. Is that was about two years ago, so okay, yeah, <laughs> wonderful, you know, and and it all makes sense because she had such a life story to share. I mean, every, like you always say it, and I love that is that everybody's a walking story, and you know, Taylor Dane is definitely no different. And it sounds like you know she has gone through a lot, and it makes complete sense that she has written an autobiography called tell it to my heart how i lost my, mm, <laughs> <right here. laughs> my that's <pain>. real and raw 
<laughs> conquered my fear and found my voice. Right. Um, you know, and she talks about, you know, her start, her, her, her interest in music, how she got started, um, how she got to that place. And, you know, also how she had to deal with, you know, the emotional and the mental that goes along. That I think a lot of times in the past would kind of get overlooked is the mental and emotional journey that you go on when you do get diagnosed with something. Oh God, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I, I think now they are looking more into that, you know, trying to make sure people are, yeah, you're physically going through something, but how are you mentally handling it? Mm-hmm. You know, and she talks about that along the way in her book. So that's probably a really good read. I would imagine, you know, she's, yeah. she's fascinating. Yeah. And, and, and real quick, you know, she was talking about how, even when she was feeling better, to go along with what you were saying about emotional as long as as well as physical health she's saying when you're really sick you don't have the energy you're really relying on your champions around you your soldiers your people um, find the doctor that will tell you the truth be a warrior for yourself end quote Ah, uh, yeah so that that being said i mean she's she's speaking words of wisdom <laughs> like yeah you know, like you said the older we get that's it's it's definitely something that we will pass on as well yeah definitely you know early detection does mean a lot so you yeah. know we'll just echo what she said follow that advice <laughs> <laughs> well you know we've come to the end of our discussion this week um taylor danes you know her illumination into the pop music world you know we really saw nothing that was anything short of fascinating her, her prowess, those, you know, notes that she would hit, you know, she would rock the house. Mm -hmm. Um, She, she just always, you know, she always had woven herself into, you know, our retro memories from the eighties or whatever. Like she's from that MTV era. Yes. You know, we thank her for that, but even though she has largely fallen out of the public eye, the, you know, these present times, she still continues to perform and record, showcasing that voice that is still just as mesmerizing as it was back in the late 80s into the early 90s. Yeah. <laughs> Miss with seven back to back top 10 singles. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she definitely doesn't have a heart of stone. <laughs> <laughs> Love what you heard on this week's episode? Well, the answer is simple. To tune into future treks into the Orchard Archives, meet up with us here next week. Same time, same place at the sweet spot. And it would mean the world to us if you could leave us a shining review and feedback. Spreading the word really is the best way to grow our podcast and explore more iconic memories. Thank you. (laughs) 